Okay, hello and good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to JFD Traders Espresso with me, Datterson Charles, because today is the 25th of March 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's morning recording. Um, where, as always, we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, um, the usual stuff. Uh, but before we do that, as uh, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, uh, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. There's always a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump in, um, quick mentioning of our JFD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. Um, and of course, our JFD Bank website and specifically our JFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, feel free to visit us here on jfdbank.com and click on the research tab right there. So so I believe you can find some useful information here for yourselves, guys. Um, Right now then, uh, quickly, let's uh, have a look at what's happening here. Now, this is the information from yesterday the, the when uh, I was doing the Trader's Tea Time. But uh, if we refresh the page, uh, we can see that um, the number has grown again. Um, well, no surprises there so far. But the number number continues to grow rapidly. Uh, the the amount of infected people um, um, is growing sharply. So uh, yes, and the death as, deaths as well. Um, these are in um, on well continue to grow as well. Um, it, here, the statistics, we can see that uh, although China has the most infection, infections, it um, it is now losing uh, to Italy, or should I say it has been from last week already losing to Italy, and Italy has already surpassed the, death, uh, the Chinese death number uh, at least twice. So... Um, now, uh, Spain is also catching up and probably it's going to be a matter of um, either uh, just a day or, uh, or a couple of days until uh, Spain will manage to surpass Chinese figure as well. So basically, of course, it's not something good, but um, yes, I mean, that's the, that's the current day reality. Um, unfortunately, guys, we, uh, we are living in these times, so I hope you're doing all the measures, you, you, all, you're taking all the measures you can um, in order to kind of protect yourselves. So, um, so let's see what's happening in the market sphere here. Uh, so the FTSE 100 yesterday closed sharply in the, um, to the upside. Um, I talked about this uh, index uh, yesterday, and basically what I was telling you guys uh, to keep a close eye on certain some of these uh, levels. And basically what I was saying initially that if we get a push above the 5,195 territory, then yes, we will aim for um, for further upside, and uh, there could be more chances for this one to drift higher, which happens uh, as such. Um, and the the index even traveled above this other target of ours at 5,295, which also got comfortably broken, and the index closed. Um, index closed above uh, this level as well. So in a way, looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is currently balancing around the 5,460 zone, basically not far from where it closed yesterday. Um, in a way, what we're looking here for is um, maybe a further push higher because um, as you probably follow the news, um, we did, uh, US did get, um, uh, an agreement reached uh, between Republicans and, and, and Democrats on the $2 uh, trillion dollar stimulus package. Um, so basically, the market here yesterday rallied due to the uh, the so-called kind of rumors or belief uh, that the deal could get reached. And uh, yep, the whole day yesterday, the uh, the European markets, uh, the then after that, the U.S. equities showed fantastic gains. Um, as you probably read the news somewhere, the Dow reached a, um, a kind of a historic high. 
a daily high, uh, daily gain, I would say, um, and uh, so that was since 1933. Um, so coming back to here now with the equity markets, of course, yes, the whole the whole situation around the uh, U.S. kind of reaching a uh, stimulus uh, package deal. Um, yes, that's all good. However, uh, we still remain skeptical because we'll, we want to see how effective this could be because in a way, we don't want to get into the idea of um, buy the rumor, sell the, f the news, and uh, sell the fact. So um, yes, that's the that's the problem here because the if the uh, if the whole situation we were surrounding the coronavirus continues to uh, let's say accelerate, and uh, then maybe this uprise here this it could be seen as a, just a temporary correction before another leg of selling from the technical side. Yes, that's exactly what it looks like right now. Uh, as long as this index remains below this downside line, taken from the high of the 24th of February, uh, still, uh, like I said, we will class this move as a temporary correction before another leg of selling. Um, for those who are more on the cautious side, could just wait for a drop below this this area of support here, around the 4,000. Nine hundred zone, and then if we do get a drop below that, then yes, further declines could be possible. So for now, guys, uh, be very careful here. Um, yes, we are. We could see a bit more uprise here on the whole kind of um, the whole positive, uh, all the whole positivity around surrounding the uh, the deal reached uh, in the U.S. But um, still, like I said, if the problem uh, remains, and probably the problem will remain for a bit, uh, for at least a little bit more um, the whole I mean the coronavirus problem to be honest I mean like I said for now we're still a bit skeptical about any and kind of further advances here to the upside so be very careful here and, and keep your eyes on some of these on some of these levels in terms of the upside in a way we could consider maybe higher levels if we um, get a, maybe a push above the uh, 5,789 zone. That's the uh, the lowest point of June 2016. Um, and then, yes, we could aim for, for higher levels, at least for a little bit more here. But for now, for now, be very careful, guys, and like I said, uh, be very cautious. And uh, if we do get a break of this downside line, then yes, maybe we'll consider a bit of a more upside. Uh, for now, from the very short-term perspective, don't get me wrong. Yes, we could consider uh, some more upside as well, but only up until this downside line. And then after that, we'll we'll have to reevaluate everything again. A similar story with uh, the the uh, the German DAX here. Um, now he, in this situation, yes, you can see we can see that the cash index is trying to climb higher a little bit, and uh, it's currently uh, balancing around the 9,791 zone. So we're not far from that psychological. Uh, 10,000 barrier, uh, which is roughly around here, basically not far from this high, the high of the 13th of March, which, are, which is around the 9,985. And uh, in a way, uh, we're keeping a close eye on this and a keeping a close eye on this downside line as well, taken from the high of the uh, 20th of February. Because as I said, as I said in pre, uh, when I was covering, uh, when I was looking at you, uh, the FTSE 100, uh, in a way, these positive news that are coming out from the U.S. right now uh, could be just temporary measures and uh, could work temporarily. And uh, well, I mean, like I said, we could see another round of selling. I mean, uh, some market participants might take advantage of the higher prices and then uh, go short again. So, but again, this is a little bit of speculation for now. Uh, for now, like I said, keep your eyes on on some of these lines, some of these levels. Um, let's keep an eye on this downside line. As I said, if it continues to hold, another round of selling selling could be possible. If the if the price starts climbing uh, above the uh, 10,280 zone, which is the low of the uh, lowest point of December 2018, uh, this is where it could become, or actually, it's the lowest point of 2018. Then, yes, we could consider maybe higher levels, but until then, uh, we are a little bit skeptical about any further uh, advances to the upside here. Uh, silver. So, silver had a fantastic rally yesterday. Um, it accelerated nicely to the upside. Um, as you can see, after we had this drop, the uh, 
the, the commodity managed to regain uh, around 50% of its losses made from the uh, 6th of March here. And as you can see, uh, or should I say from the high of March, um, and as you can see, uh, now the big question here is, can this travel back above this upside support line taken from the low, uh, the low, lowest point of November 2018? Now, this is going to be very interesting because in a way, um, if it continues to hold, if the um, the the precious metal struggles to do so, something like this could be possible here where we could see another round of selling. So that's why we'll be very careful and cautious. Keep your eyes on this one. Um, if we do see a nice good push back above this upside line, then yes, we will aim for some upside. But if it struggles to do so, then, uh, well, I mean, this is where it could turn out a little bit ugly um, for the for silver again, and we could see another round of selling. Um, also, something to consider and something to keep in mind, not only this, um, this upside support line, but also keep your eyes on this little uh, short-term tentative downside line. So, in a way, uh, this could just help us a little bit more, because if we climb back above the upside support line and stay here, yes, maybe... Um, Maybe the bulls could see this as an opportunity to, more bulls could see this as an opportunity to step in. Uh, but we do have this downside line and this is where the problem could arise if this downside line holds. Now this is where that uh, little kind of, uh, this is where a lot of traders could get stopped out and could get uh, kind of, their positions could kind of suffer, let's put it that way. And uh, if you would think that maybe now we would, it's going to be time, the time to move higher, but if it gets a hold up near this downside line, then yep, another round of selling could be possible. So that's why be very careful, even if it travels above this upside support line. Um, for those who are even on the more cautious side, then yes, you could wait for a break of this downside line uh, as well. Um, don't get me wrong; I do understand that we, you're probably missing out on the uh, on this this move here higher. Um, I will put it this way: don't be greedy, um, and uh, there is always opportunity um, uh, opportunity in the market. So um, either up or down. So that's why, guys. Be very careful. We rather stay safe than sorry. Um, and uh, yep, uh, like I said, don't worry. There will there is plenty of opportunity in the market. If it's not in silver, then somewhere else. Um, that's why, like I said, just it's we always try to minimize our risk or at least try to. Um, kind of increase our uh, increase the probability of where a certain asset might go. So. Um, Bitcoin Cash. Now I've looked at this one uh, yesterday, and uh, basically I was telling, talking about this downside line taken from the high of the 15th of February. Oh, sorry, 16th of February. Is that 15th or 16th? Uh, that's 15th of February. There we go. Um, so uh, the crypto continues to get hold, get a hold up here. Um, we can see that it's struggling to move higher for now. Um, the big question here is: Will this this downside line continue to hold, or we will see a nice break here? If we do, then for us to get comfortable to, with higher levels, we need to see a pop above the uh, 240 48 zone here, which is the high of the uh, 20th of March, and then yep, we will aim for some higher levels. For now, uh, we're just keeping an eye on this one and uh, we're not doing anything. In terms of the downside, if this suddenly starts dropping back below the 191, 92 territory here, then yes, we will aim for some downside. For now, like I said, keep your eyes on these uh, these two levels. AUD USD, so um, climbing, comf nicely climbing back above that, that psychological 0 0.60 zone or uh, the other one that I had here, the 0 0.6009 level. Now. Uh, this level here, and let me just show you, I need to go back into history here, way back into history, and probably a monthly chart here would do. So, uh, the lowest point of 20, uh, sorry, 2008, the lowest point of 2008, we're back above it, and this is what I talked about last week, basically, where I was telling you that, guys, to keep an eye on the monthly candle, because uh, we are getting closer to the end of the month, and the big question here is, will this monthly candle stay above, will it close above this level, or will it be below it? So, for now, you can see that the bulls are really uh, trying hard to keep this one above because if we stay above then there could be a bit of a chance here to see maybe some upside uh, a bit of an upside correction here 
Um, however, if the uh, the the rate uh, remains below this this level, then yep, I mean further declines could be possible going into April. So, uh, yep, something to consider, something to keep an eye on. For now, yes, uh, we are pushing higher, but again, don't get me wrong, uh, this could quickly uh, change as the market right now is a little bit unstable. So, um, if I can use the word a little bit. Um, so guys that's why keep your eyes on this one keep your eyes on this uh 0 0.60 0 0.9 level um the, as i've mentioned before like i said keep your eyes on the monthly chart on this one as well on the monthly candle let's see where this is going to end usd cad um so here we have a nice um upside support line a steep upside support line but as i've mentioned uh last week when i was covering usd cad basically we would like to see a test of this upside line and uh uh, after we now managed to break this level here, the 1.44, 32, 33 zone, it traveled lower, but found support around here near the 1.41, 62 zone from which it rebounded and traveled back to the upside. So again, uh, it got a hold up near this level here, the 1.45, 36, and, and one of my videos last week, I was talk talking about this level that we need to see a nice good clear break and maybe ideally a close at least of a four hour candle before we could uh, consider uh, some higher levels. Now you can see that this level continued to hold um, and now the rate is traveling back down. So um, the big question here is can we actually finally test this upside support line? If we do, and if it holds, something like this could be possible. Uh, because again, as long as this upside line remains intact, still the kind of the uh, the outlook here will be or at least the near-term outlook could be to the upside um, however if this upside line breaks and the uh, the rate falls below this 1.4162 which as you can see acting as a nice area of support but if we get a break below this now this is where it could turn out to be ugly for um, for USD CAD so something to consider something to keep an eye on guys so yes uh, for now for now keep your eyes on on some of these levels Levels, especially for today for example keep your eyes on this 1.43 uh, 25 zone um, a nice good drop below this as you can see today it's currently it's currently acting as a nice area of support but if we get a drop below this then yep uh, we will consider a possible test of this upside support line um, and then we'll take it from there if we get a break of it then and we get a break of this 1.4162 then yep uh, this could lead to it towards lower levels uh, GBP JPY so yesterday we had a nice push from the uh, the pound the pound gain gained um uh, but only gained against most of its uh, most of its counterparts, um, apart from the commodity-linked currencies like uh, NZD and Aussie. So, um, so here the situation stands like this: that we managed the technical situation, of course. Uh, the we managed to break this level here, the 130.43. I've talked about this one previously because what I was saying that if we see uh, if this downside line continues to hold and this level here also continues to hold. And we could see another round of selling but we got a nice break above it so yep this increases the chances now of a further drift higher um, for today, uh, we will keep an eye on this high, the the high of the 20th of March, which is around the uh, 132 zone, uh, roughly around there. If we get a nice push above it, then uh, yep, uh, we will aim for uh, aim for higher levels again. So that's why, guys, for now, be very careful, be very cautious, and uh, let's see if this can push higher. Um, for now, like I said, we'll, uh, again, we, it's it's a it's a difficult market. On one hand, yes, you have the pound, which is um, kind of gaining. But on the other hand, if if something starts changing in the markets and uh, we start uh, shifting to more risk-off environment, then maybe yen uh, the yen will start picking up as uh, more interest, uh, more buying interest, and uh, we could see this pair dropping. So. Um, that's why, guys, for now, uh, keep your eyes on some certain levels. If we get get a push above the 132 zone, then yes, we will aim for the upside. The next potential target for us could be around here, around the 134.31 zone, or we could travel a little bit higher towards this 200 uh, EMA on the four-hour chart. But again, for now, uh, let's keep an eye on this one. Uh, that's our going to be this is um, this is going to be our alternative scenario. Let me just quickly uh, correct this now. 
alternative scenario here is the um, is a drop below the uh, this level here, the 120, 126.55, and then yep, we will aim for further declines. Uh, GBP NZD, this is what I was talking about. Was talking about so GBP NZD. Uh, didn't quite uh, perform well. Uh, the the pound didn't quite perform well against the NZD uh, against the New Zealand dollar. Um, and looking at this chart here, this is a daily chart. You can see that we're back to this upside support line. Um, after failing to move above the 2.0764 zone, we are back now to this upside support line. And uh, the big question here is still the same: uh, Can this stay and can it drop and stay below this psychological two territory? So uh, for now it keeps breaking this upside line and keeps breaking the psychological two level but it cannot even close a daily candle below it so that's why this level here the psychological two level is becoming quite an important one to watch so in a way also keep your eyes for on today um, if the um, if the 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 commodity linked currencies continue to rise uh, and and New Zealand dollar is one of those uh, then yep we could see a nice drop here to the downside especially like I said if we do, if we see a drop below that psychological two zone then yes we will aim uh, for further declines so keep your eyes on this one with the upside still remains the same we need to see a push above this barrier here before uh, considering some higher levels and finally euro USD so here uh, the the bulls are not giving up. Uh, yesterday, the the pair traveled higher, tested this downside line. And let me just jump back into a four-hour chart. Tested, almost tested this downside line, and uh, then it kind of sold off again and, and drifted back below this 1.0777 zone, which is the lowest point of February 2020. Um, uh, but today, this morning, we're seeing a nice boost again here. Uh, we're seeing the, the 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 pair trying to climb, uh, uh, climbing back above the 1.08 level here. So yep, that's that's a positive note for the bulls. However, we are still below this downside line. So let's the the big problem here is this downside line, and the question can it be overcome? Uh, so. At the moment, at the moment, as long as this downside line remains intact, we cannot really talk about any upside because we need to see a clear break above this uh, above this downside line. And probably we're gonna. We, yesterday I talked about this 1.0952 uh, territory. Yes, this probably still will remain for us as an interesting level. But uh, now because it, it shifted, the pair shifted a little bit more to the right. Uh, we can keep an eye on this on the high of yesterday around the 1.0880. Aid zone. So, um, if we get a nice push above this barrier, then yes, we could consider some higher levels at least in the near term. Um, so that's why for now we'll be very careful again, cautious. And uh, if we get it, if we get another drop back below the 1.0777, then uh, yes, we could, we will again aim for this this key area of support around the 1.0650 um, but if we get if we do get a break of this downside line and the rate pushes above the 1.0888 then something more interesting uh, for the bulls could come up here so I hope this you found it useful guys thank you very much for watching and listening and uh, as always as always um, Stay safe, uh, guys. Uh, like I said, I can't stress this enough, and I hope you take care of your uh, health and uh, you stay indoors for now. Um, and yeah, like I said, guys, uh, catch my video after uh, around 4 four fifteen GMT today, where my traders tea time. So yep, I'm really. Uh, I hope uh, you will find it useful as as well. Um, I hope you found this video useful, and uh, yep. Thank you very much for your kind of views and likes and, and everything like that, guys. So, yeah, I really appreciate it. Anyway, I'll catch you later, guys. Thank you very much, and have a nice trading day. Bye-bye.